are contributing towards the you know the zero, net zero goal of of a country we 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 aim to achieve net zero goal net zero emissions and that is a big goal and all our speakers all our experts have you know given us information knowledge towards how we can how our sectors can contribute and we can move towards achieving this goal now distributed renewable energy which is the topic of today that is one very important area and in the ministry also we had been putting a lot of efforts where we can go we can address the issue of electricity we can address the issue of energy all over india we all know we are big emitters of uh, you know emissions and we need to curb our emissions and this is and side by side we also have to grow so as our economy will grow our emissions will also grow we have to provide mm -hmm. energy access through to all village level electrification has been done 100% so that is a big achievement but still we need to have more clean energy sources into our system so that we can uh, you know give access to everyone but at the same time not pollute our environment so dre systems they offer a very good solutions they can you know the smart city concept there also we can integrate the dre cons dre uh, projects and of course solar rooftop has been one important area where we are doing a lot of distributed and we have achieved a lot but i feel that this sector needs to be pushed there is you know water supplier is reading this infra your charging infrastructure then we also have the storage systems where we can have off grid systems which can improve the agriculture produce storage of it and of course how the farmers can be benefited from it so with this i, I would not take further time i would like to invite dr shrinivas he uh, in fact i would I request mr pb singh to introduce him he has been, he has a lot of experience and we have all been associated i was talking to mr pb singh with the urja gram projects you know urja gram was one concept with the ministry wanted that the system, that the village has clean sources of energy and the entire village is on renewables so that was the starting point dr shrinivas will agree with me where we all started towards meeting you know providing energy access to everyone in the villages and of course now the now the uh, cities and everywhere so with this i would once again welcome you dr shrinivas and i thank you for giving us time and i thank you that you are giving us this opportunity to listen to you and i request mr pv singh to kindly introduce you thank you very much over to you mr singh thank <clears throat> thank you ma'am thank you very much uh, for welcoming the uh, participants and the speaker and uh, uh, i am happy to share uh, ma'am uh, that i and ceo sir to uh, urja gram project uh, i i was the team member of the urja gram evaluation project and we we completed the, in the leadership of the dr dasan srinivas <clears throat> uh, yeah. uh, good afternoon everyone i'll welcome to the 62 62 series of webinar skill council for green job is is organizing a series of webinar to celebrate azadi ka amrit mahotsav as a part of india's celebration of uh, 75 years in independence in this series scgj is inviting eminent and learned speakers in different sectors on sustainable development renewable energy and waste management so as to deepen the understanding of recent development in these sectors the first in the series was launched on 24th september 2021 today we have uh, dr rasan srinivas uh, who is a very experienced learned distinguished speaker who will be sharing his expertise and experience on synthesizing a uh, dre experience for net zero pathways dr rasan srinivas has phd in mechanical engineer science he has been working in the development sector for the last 30 years particularly in the area of climate action and mitigation energy access decentralized renewable energy energy efficiency and 
corporate social responsibility. Currently, he is providing consulting support to the World Bank, UNDP India, and Bank of UNIDO, ADB, Administrative Staff College of India, and UN Women. He is a trustee for NGO Swami uh, Sivananda Memorial Institute, mentor for all India Citizen Alliance for the Progress and Development, and president of PAC to Act. Dr. Srinivas worked as the Chief Executive Officer of REC Foundation, CSR Arms of REC Limited, Government of India. He was CEO at Clean Energy Access Network, New Delhi. He worked in the UNDP as Program Analyst, Energy and Climate Change. He also worked in the Energy and Resources Institute, New Delhi, and IISC, Bangalore. Dr. Srinivas has published over 100 books, papers, reports. He has patient guided over 50 interns for their internship, master's and PhD. He has provided over 200 plus guest lecture, lectures. He has over a dozen recognition for his distinguished contribution. He has a, visited over 20 countries, including for official missions. Now, I request Dr. S. M. Srinivas to start your presentation. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, P.B. Singh, for very generous introduction. Um, right away, let me go to the presentation, if uh, that's okay. Yeah. Rohit, uh, can... Uh, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah, no, sir, yeah, you yeah, may share your screen. Perfect. Rohit, is it full screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank yes, sir. you. Thank you once again uh, for this uh, nice opportunity. I would like to thank Dr. Saxena, Dr. Dhamija, PB Singh, and all uh, Skill Council Group for Green Jobs uh, uh, staff who have been at it uh, week on week. We are looking forward to. And I myself, I have been attending this program and quite enriching. And I have attended at least, I can say, 30 for sure. And uh, I have saved a lot of uh, this. Uh, you know, uh, PPTs, and then it's quite useful. You know, in, in, in fact, in my uh, consulting as well. Thank you very much for organizing this. I would only request you to continue to uh, beyond your 75 Azadika Amrit Mahotsav. I would only wish that you uh, you will decide to continue this uh, on a weekly basis. Thank you. Uh, now today's topic is uh, decentralized renewable energy. How does it uh, help us uh, for the uh, uh, net zero? In an emissions pathway. So let's try to understand. My talk is going to be around. Uh, let's going to let's uh, understand a bit on what is this NZE, what is DRE, and potential for DRE, and a few experiences that where I was kind of involved. Uh, I'm only taking some of them. DRE experience one on the mini grid. Uh, we all started. Those who have been working in this sector for 30 years definitely want uh, DRE means okay something done in remote. And if you go to a laboratory, it's something in the corner of that lab is where, you know, these guys are doing. And these guys are like, you know, okay, you see them, they're not, uh, you know, not the white colored, but really blue colored uh, people. And uh, DRE experience two is all about heating applications. DRE experience three, I would just touch upon agriculture value chain. And then I had a lot, a long experience of almost 10 years on the sericulture value chain. And to sum up, a few summing up points. So what is NZE? You know, the classical definition of uh, what the IRENA, uh, International Renewable Energy Agency, uh, IEA, all put together is something like this. Net zero refers to not releasing more carbon emissions than you are removing. Little complicated though, but for us to understand, it is eliminating anthropogenic carbon dioxide emissions over a specified period. Now, it has two components. One is decarbonization. That is not releasing emissions. Second is then you know the word the, the uh, then then you are removing they are negative emissions that pertains to carbon sinks through forests, carbon capture and storage, geoengineering. So so you know in 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 a sense this is what net zero emissions would mean. Now we all know decarbonization. You know decarbonization is uh, uh, not releasing emissions. 
it can be done at company organizational level for example apple has committed uh, you know to de decarbonize their company sectoral carbonization uh, decarbonization electricity sector building sector transportation sector etc economy wide or national so whole nation decides the way we have done the way many countries have done and then global level decarbonization so more or less if you see uh, 80% of the shareholding uh, countries about 137 to be precise as of uh, now have committed to net zero emissions the days the, uh, the years vary many have committed to 2050 and india has committed to 2070 because we have our compulsion to increase our standard of living so some individual persons have committed net zero the no known uh, you know personalities harry and megan foundation and uh, multinational corporations like google apple walmart facebook etc uh, and then cities have committed and then of course countries have committed this little old data the mid of 2021 but when i checked uh, uh, it's almost 137 countries now it seems so now for this to happen what we should be doing uh, if we have to go towards net zero emissions now if you see in 2018 we have consumed about 378 etajoules of total final energy that should reduce by 2050 to 348 now if you see on the left hand side figure it gives various combination of different fuel sources energy sources so we if you see there 25 percent is contributed by renewable in the form of modern biomass traditional biomass and uh, re variable re uh, so that has to increase to 90 percent if 90 percent if you see the uh, right side diagram so this is what has to happen in the next uh, uh, say 20, 30 years. Now, given to this, India has uh, committed to uh, not only NDC, but net zero also. If you see here, uh, India has committed to 500 gigawatt of thermal, uh, 500 gigawatt, gigawatt of uh, non-fossil fuel installations by 2030. And uh, India has, uh, you know, stepped up its ambition than what was earlier. And it has, uh, it has been meeting, in fact, over meeting its uh, uh, target set. For example, 2022, it has set a target of 175. What I see from MNRE's annual report, it's, it has met 188 uh, gigawatt. So next point is 50% of the cumulative electric power installation uh, comes from non-fossil. Today morning only, I was just watching power minister's interview with NDTV. Uh, he's in Devos and he says 42% has already been achieved. And in terms of next question comes is, what is in terms of generation? Installed capacity you will do, but what in terms of generation? 25%, he said, already is through non-fossil. So he is quite confident that we will not only touch 50%, but over meet it. So, and then third interesting point in the Panchamrat, you know, uh, what uh, uh, Prime Minister announced uh, during the Glasgow summit last year, uh, is on, uh, you know, these five important uh, uh, quantifiable uh, targets, 1 billion tons of carbon emissions. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm particularly reading, it, reading this out. And at the end, I would like to tell you how uh, DRE can contribute, you know. So, uh, and rest of the things are there for you to see. But one important uh, thing is on the uh, green one, which is uh, net zero emissions by 2017. Now, what's DRE? Potential for DRE. Let's see. Now, the classical definition, as I said, uh, you know, classical understanding of people on DRE, as I said earlier, you know, uh, it's re re remote, rural, and uh, in a laboratory, it's on the remote corner that they're doing something on a cook stove, something on solar water heaters, that kind of a impression. But if you, uh, if you see, the definition goes like this. Uh, any system that uses renewable energy to generate, store, and distribute energy in a localized way. It includes off-grid solar systems, pico-solar, pico solar home systems, mini and micro-grid powered by solar, biomass, hydro, or a combination of these sources, biomass cookstores, biogas, solar cookers, and productive applications. So it is uh, needless to say that it, it plays an important role, particularly in a country diverse like India and many other developing nations, because we are like very small uh, requirements that we have, but dispersed. Even as uh, Dr. Dhamija was saying just a while ago, we may have achieved 100% uh, electrification, but we still have not achieved energy, uh, you know, clean energy sources to all our requirement. So 
if you see do we have enough dairy products apparently we have 400 that's what i was discussing with somebody and i pulled out uh, this you know list from uh, clean energy access networks uh, website there are about 100 so uh, you know when we started 30 years ago there were hardly three or four groups working on it and hardly 10 or 15 different uh, products in place but now it's uh, heartening to see that you name an uh, end application, you have something there. At least a few trials done. Only thing that it requires is a good ecosystem where we really multiply and meet the requirement. I'll come to that. So almost 100, if you just uh, go to different uh, you know, uh, sectors, you have, uh, you know, further if you go, different applications are there and people have made products. So how does it look like in the... Uh, international scenario you know if you look at the distributed pv the red uh, graph and other renewables uh, and to an extent bio energy energy they all are kind of catering to what is called decentralized renewable energy in my view so if you see we are increasing uh, globally not not only uh, you know uh, so all developing nations together are contributing to this growth so if you look at the distributed renewable energy, are they playing a significant role? If you just, uh, India, it may be far lesser, but uh, if you look at countries like Nepal, Bangladesh, Rwanda, etc., uh, anything in the range of 5 to 10% of their energy requirement is coming from distributed renewable energy solutions. So let's look at how we are doing. You know, uh, I pulled out these numbers from uh, MNRE uh, website where uh, they have uh, presented till 21 end, what has been installed in the name of DRD. You know, it's lanterns, home lights, solar uh, lights, solar uh, pumps, et cetera, et cetera. If you look at the, the, the last column I have put together is, what is the potential? You know, in India, uh, particularly in uh, in, uh, in rural area, in the urban, it has reduced. Uh, we used to keep one light on uh, uh, because any emergency, we, we have to go out. So like that, you know, one of the NSSO, National Sample Survey Organization, survey said 180 million kerosene lamps. There may, it may have reduced, but definitely my guess is it would be at least 100 million still would be in use. I do not know, later, later, latest data on that is not available, but they, you know, this is sim, uh, solar lamps can simply replace this kerosene, uh, kerosene lamps. So in fact, uh, we should that, uh, public, uh, you know, uh, public uh, uh, distribution facility, uh, uh, kerosene for uh, this uh, kerosene uh, supply, in my view, can be reduced or closed, and you can replace it with either bio oil or uh, with, uh, you know, solar gadgets. So if you look at solar pumps, we have put up about uh, 300,000, and um, the potential is like 30 million. Uh, because we have 30 million electrical and uh, diesel uh, pump sets in the country. And similarly, street lights, we have just put up about 145,000 and we have 600,000 villages. You can assume 20 solar street lights to come by. Uh, and then solar packs, about two and a half thousand, but just take telecom towers, we have 800,000. So, uh, and, and coming down, we have a potential of six, a potential in uh, 60 million uh, micro, small and medium enterprises and dairy, goshala and 10% biofuel. So all this together, we are sitting on a, a golden uh, mine of uh, what, what we can term as decentralized renewable energy, whether it is in, 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 uh, in going green or uh, creating employment and uh, increasing incomes. So uh, when I was in uh, Clean Energy Access Network, you know, it, it comes out with uh, status of uh, decentralized renewable energy year on year. 2018, I had the opportunity to author a, a book publication. So there I tried for to you know, quantify in terms of the money. So if you look at you know, off-grid solar PV, solar thermal and clean cooking systems, but putting a very, very conservative figure because when I came up with this number, 103 billion US dollars, the, for the governing council of clean was you know, summoned me. Uh, and then they said, these figures be, better be good. Uh, you know, I, I was very confident and this got published. And afterwards, several other uh, uh, DRE, uh, the agencies working in DRE have up, upgraded this number to $140 billion, $200 billion. So like that. Uh, so now, 
first experience on dre i myself when i was a youngster in you know 1990 after a very brief period as a lecturer after my engineering from nit suratkal i i preferred to work on i gave interview in iisc there were three projects one to do something on uh, in solar pond uh, based in iisc campus in bangalore and second was something in uh, sludge uh, reactor based in bangalore and third was uh, to work on a village uh, you know mini grid system based on the biomass ga- gasification i preferred that i wanted flexible in my operation and allow my thinking to uh, you know uh, it should i should have that kind of a freedom so i went there and i ran this uh, mini grid uh, for 3 uh, years i must tell you that in those 3 years uh, i myself in, was in a village sat in a village about uh, 12 kilometers from here i ran this system you know 95% of the days uh, 4 to 6 hours is what we used to give power to that village 95% of the days it was up and running with 200 plus or minus uh, 10% uh, variation in the voltage which was unheard of at that time now you we are all getting very stable power probably some of you may not even realize what stable power uh, you know how unstable it was in the villages in the village where i was staying i used to get 140 to 160 volts so tube lights will not run uh, it was only incandescent bulbs which will run with bl- lot of blinking so uh, there i used to get only 50% of the days power but in the villages where i was involved in running this uh, uh, pilot i was I, i i ensured that it it ran for uh, it ran a very high number of days it it required a lot of commitment lot of issues in the earlier days you know it, it used to have tar all the issues but despite that i used to i i, I got a permission to have a second gasifier so that i increase the you know performance of the system etc so it was an amazing three years experience for me in the decentralized renewable energy uh, area i cherish that uh, so village looked something like this but this is a i have taken this picture from some other uh, uh, solar based uh, mini grid and uh, at some point in time about 6 7 years ago i think uh, some of the states which have which had a lot of uh, uh, villages without power encouraged uh, mini grids now so uh, is it, you know it, typically it has you know, on the left side one power pack whether it is uh, solar you will have all the solar related uh, things panels uh, batteries uh, inverters etc on the right side is the village the distribution part even whether it is a biogas based community based biogas plant or gasifier based left side is a power house and right side is the local distribution now uh, question is you know uh, we uh, as i took the latest count is something like this about 9 9 lakh people are uh, still uh, uh, i mean i wouldn't say still but depend on mini grid power in india 10000 mini grids by 2022 was the kind of target i am very sure that would have been met uh so point is uh, you know are they out of uh, fashion now i'll come to that before that i one most recent experience uh, that uh, i would like to share is i had gone to uttarakhand on an adb assignment who wanted to government of uh, uttarakhand wanted to get rid of uh, pine needles when when they dry and fall on the ground it would uh, uh, you know uh, increase the chances of forest fire and it would not allow uh, 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 growth of plants below that so they encouraged uh, you know uh, power plant gasifier based power plant as one of the solutions i had the opportunity to visit and make an assessment of that but but uh, there is a technical issue but i immediately suggested that uh, we should go for briquettes and bri- uh, make briquettes uh, community uh, you know they can put up a, a community based by the uh, briquette plant and uh, have market linkage to something like rudrapur nainital etc not too far away because the costs uh, then it will increase so uh, this somehow i uh, i mean i felt um, uh, it's more remunerable and cost effective to go for briquettes but i am i this particular plant when i visited uh, in uh, i think july it was functioning this is the uh, person who was running it outstanding example i would say because to run a gasifier power plant it takes a, a lot from you Uh, many of my senior colleagues would uh, definitely watch on this because they have spent time uh, in uh, observing those two particular power plants okay so uh, are they out of fashion mini grids you know this is something uh, there was a lot of hype 
and in fact rockefeller committed almost 1000 uh, mini grids and and suddenly when saubhagya came all houses were electrified then uh, the thinking is oh no 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 now they are out of fashion but in my view it is transforming you have 600000 villages you need street lights you need water pumping grid you know uh, grid power, uh, 50 more than 50% of their grants they are spending on this bills i know for sure in karnataka they get let's say 10 or 20 lakh rupees per year and uh, 50% of that you know goes to paying these bills so it is only smart for them to get into you know either solarize or have a many uh, whatever is feasible are uh, in those villages because it's panchayat's mandate to run the solar uh, street lights and provide drinking water and uh, you know you we are now going uh, uh, aggressively on uh, solar pump what will happen you know for solar pumps will run, uh, are good for 100 days because that's when you need water but what will what will you do after that so you can combine these loads and increase the capacity utilization so and in 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 urban also uh, it's not uh, in my view it's not far away that you know you will come uh, right now we are all paying 8 to 10 rupees or 12 rupees supposing we get very good very fancy looking uh, you know batteries right now they are like led acid which don't look good but if we get fancy looking uh, uh, this things you will keep it next to the uh, you know tv stand just stack it like we were uh, uh, boxes you know this and then uh, you run uh, 5 to 10 kilowatt uh, what 2 to 5 or 10 kilowatt whatever so each urban household in my view in the next 5 to 8 years can run as a mini grid uh, or micro grid whatever is the definition so you know there is one think tank Uh, uh by one mr rajendra shande who uh, was earlier unep director trying to push along with eric solhan not zero net zero that is making universities net zero uh, so all these urja gram pm adarsh gram pura uh, providing urban amenities to rural areas climate smart villages is a recent nomenclature but they are all in my my view are same we are all trying to achieve net zero there by introducing different uh, renewable energy systems scope for solarizing housing health centers in fact i was i have been in, i am involved in uh, solarizing health centers about uh, 150 okay, about 75 in uh, nagaland 75 in uh, madhya pradesh currently uh, and then uh, you know as i said premises panchayats msme gujarat modera that village has uh, you know uh, almost 1 kilowatt system on every household that's what on the right side uh, picture the both the pictures that you see so that's almost in a, uh, that's uh, declared as a net zero energy village so you know i am working with uh, world bank on uh, this particular uh, thing why uh, you know we could uh, th- that's what i have been discussing with uh, many uh, prime ministers of our yojana or housing schemes of uh, state governments many many housing schemes are there for example in uh, karnataka there are half a dozen housing schemes police housing scheme um, dr ambedkar house housing scheme etc so uh one can easily see you know uh, i did an analysis for uh, economically weaker section uh, set of people in the prime minister avas yojana uh, typically they consume about 1100 uh, units of power so i try to see you know put all energy efficiency measures and top it up with uh, rooftop 33% of roof area you cover with solar with this you know by when you make the passive measures it will reduce by 30 30 to 35% and in, include the energy efficient appliances another 15% reduction so by doing these two itself the 1100 will be uh, you will reduce about 450 or so so add it up with uh, 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 solar uh, power it it can uh, 1.5 kilowatt system can add about 1500 uh, to 1600 thereby you actually supply 90% excess and earn money uh so what is the additional cost hardly 1 lakh rupee uh, payback appears big 10 rupees but if you see the cost of power i have taken it as 14.5 but uh, after that i made this slides the pre- present prices are like 7 or 7 and a half rupees in karnataka so it would reduce the payback would reduce to like 7 or 6 uh, and a half years and as we go by the power prices from conventional uh, electricity will only increase it will the payback on and the investment only will reduce so i am giving this uh, uh, you know uh, uh, consultancy input to world bank on considering about 100000 uh, 
houses where about 1000 crores of investment just on the renewable energy can be included and that is like the climate sensitive uh, uh, climate uh, sensitive building climate sensitive housing world bank can co consider uh, this as a loan lent to uh, the states and that they are seriously considering it and uh, in fact after my next assignment deadline after today by tomorrow i have to give an approach paper to do that for karnataka so you know i saw one advert, uh, one uh, poll guarantee just about 2 3 days ago in karnataka uh, 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 i mean i will take the name of the party congress party gave this promise that 200 units of electricity uh, to every household can be uh, will be guaranteed uh, that means about 9000 crores to the exchequer every year so this would mean about 72000 crores in eight years. In this 72,000 crores, in the next present value basis, you can put up 1.5 kilowatt systems in on, on those 62 and a half lakh uh, households that they are considering. And they can generate 200 units of power every month. So, and they, they, they can last for 25 years and it can, even assuming about 200 households are catered to by, catered by one person who will take care of uh, uh, these systems, you know, from performance point of view or maintenance point of view, it can create 32,000 direct green jobs. So this will also complement Prime Minister's uh, uh, COP26 commitment of 500 gigawatt. This would mean almost, uh, uh, you know, assuming 20, uh, 20 gigawatt is for each of the state, 25 major states you could take. And that means this will become 10 gigawatts, just this uh, from 62 and a half lakh uh, houses. So my uh, my take is go green with your coal plants. So, you know, Anganwadis, every uh, district has about 500 to 1,000 Anganwadis. And they are, uh, most often they don't, they are unable to pay the uh, electricity bill on time and it gets cut. And that's why, in fact, Muzaffarpur in uh, Bihar, they said we want solarized Anganwadi because you know, uh, we most often we see Anganwadis are unable to pay on time and their electricity is cut. So we want that to be independent. So in my view, the mini grid or concept of mini grid, pico grid is going to transform and come in different fashion back either in uh, either in uh, rural or in urban areas. Uh, when I was also, uh, you know, uh, CEO of REC Foundation, this is a national Association for the Blind in Delhi. So this is a 65 kilowatt system when we put up, they don't need to pay their electricity. So every month their 20,000 rupees electric, the electricity bill is completely offset. So the residential premises, they, they can directly go for this and reduce their uh, you know, month, monthly uh, cash outflow. Let me come to heating applications. This is something which is uh, like always, uh, I'm quite passionate about. If you see, 50% of uh, primary energy is in the form of heat in India, and rest of the country, <coughs> rest of the globe also, it's a big share. I don't know; it, it may not be 50%, maybe slightly less or more, but around there. But we do not have, you know, unfortunately, we at, at the present we are not focusing sufficiently enough, in my view. So there, are, we are again sitting on a, uh, you know, gold mine with reference to. Uh, you know, thermal applications and convert it into our uh, GHG emissions. I'll come to that in a while. So if you see 50% it, uh, 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 go, I mean, 50 of that goes to industrial process, heat and residential cooking accounts to 37%. This is slightly old, but it is not varying much, maybe 5% here or there. Uh, so, you know, these are again old, but go by uh, sector, uh, uh, industry by industry, you know, all these industries, you have an opportunity to convert them into renewable energy users or reduce the biomass that they are using. I'm not going into the details of this, but few initiatives. Uh, you know, gasifiers uh, are not so cost effective with reference to uh, electricity now because the cost is in, in, in the range of 8 to uh, 13 rupees per unit of power, but they make immense sense for uh, thermal. Uh, in fact, uh, quite a few people are in their own way, about 100 to 150 uh, gasifiers they have, uh, they have sold and sl slowly selling and they're supplying sized biomass, which is still quite remunerative and uh, and making their business. At least I myself was involved in, uh, uh, you know, uh, licensing about half a dozen uh, manufacturers 
But what has not happened is it has not multiplied. I, we still need to find out ways to ways and means how we can multiply. But they are doing business. They are even now they are doing business. I am in touch with them. So lead melting or pop trace making or you know this. Uh, in fact, we initiated Gasifer uh, Energy Service Company, which is first of its kind. Uh, where the he would not he has not sold the gasifier, but steam. Uh, whatever steam you are getting from uh, LPG uh, burning, so same steam is given. The company will run this gasifiers, uh, and ev every day say two thousand rupees was the expenditure on LPG. You give me only thousand rupees. That was the contract. So, uh, um, so I mean, this kind of experiments were done, and some are running about hundred to hundred fifty, as I said, by per manufacturer. About half a dozen manufacturers are doing this, but it has not multiplied. We have to find ways. Uh, on the bottom, that what you see, I, I'm in the picture there. It's a pop trace making unit. All this Belpuri. So the right side is my uh, design, which I, uh, which I designed, fabricated, ran it in the system, and right now it is uh, put into use in a different fashion as a combustor in Downgate Smart City. I'm quite happy to learn that when uh, one of the ma manufacturer with whom this, uh, uh, you know, license agreement has happened, he is doing that. Now coming to solar water heaters, we are sitting again here. You know, we have done only 20 million meter square of uh, solar, whereas you see we have 300. Um, sorry, there is a mistake. 300 million houses, double million has appeared. So we should be doing at least 300 million meter square. If you do that, uh, assuming uh, uh, it's actually calculation show one ton one ton of carbon dioxide is reduced by one meter square of solar water heater. So you can do 300 million uh, tons of carbon dioxide reduction by 2030, even assuming just one year. So just this alone is sufficient to uh, accumulate 1 billion tons of carbon dioxide by 2030. So just this alone is sufficient. Uh, and you know, the, on, the, on the pictures you see, uh, you know, several efforts to uh, fabricate the uh, small uh, systems which can be carried to uh, different hills, etc. So these were some of the results of uh, uh, one of the projects which we, which I was involved on behalf of UNDP with uh, uh, MNRE. So another is medium temperature application. Here also uh, there is enormous scope. You went through one detailed talk by Pankaj just about uh, four or five weeks. I'm not going into the details, but uh, I it is suffices to say that right now we uh, India has put up about. 300 uh, systems, maybe 50,000 meters square, but we are sitting on several million meters square of uh, area. Thousand times more is the uh, potential. So, you know, on the right side, you see this very interesting system um, where it is put on the fourth floor of a building in Arke Mission uh, in Chennai, and it uh, it has a facility to store the steam so that morning four o'clock they can prepare uh, breakfast and give it to the students by seven o'clock. And they can also cook the last uh, evening meal too. All meals are cooked by using this solar concentrator. So we are almost leaders in solar concentrators in the world as of now for heat applications. So we can capitalize on that. What is the issue right now? The payback on the investment is six years. That is not what uh, uh, industry will invest. So we have to reduce it to something below three years. How can we do? Just the way we did for solar photovoltaic, what were two issues were there which were solved by the government? One, the land issue. Second, evacuation issue. Similarly here, if a consistent policy is there and, uh, and a large production is there, it would reduce the cost, number one. Number two, every, every subcomponent should, should be made efficient. Thereby, it, is, it would further reduce the cost. So by doing all this, uh, if it is possible, and, and also complement it with some kind of a central financial assistance uh, by carbon tax or whatever. There are many ways on coal cess uh, people are collecting. So till it is uh, cost effective, you can, one can support through carbon cess or something like that. So this is another uh, interesting uh, thing where solar distillation without any power input. This is a technology by Solar Institute Zulish Germany. Uh, I was involved in running them in a village and also a control system in the in Terry campus in Bangalore, uh, but it did not take off. But there, it, there, there lies a lot of uh, uh, you know uh, promise with these kind of technologies. I'm very sure they will all come back. 
Uh, and then coming to biomass value chain, you know, I, uh, if you remember about a year ago, the cost of the coal increased very significantly uh, from uh, 7 rupees per kg to 14 rupees per kg. Surat, in Surat, I'm actually helping the UNIDO in preparing and making a proposal on energy efficiency improvements in boilers. Uh, when we did a survey, Surat, 80% of the about 50 industries which were surveyed have converted from uh, coal to biomass. So bricketing is one of the big area, 250 million tons of surplus biomass is available. That's one big area where, where uh, we can, uh, where uh, you know, DRE can take off in, uh, produce, uh, in producing and selling these briquettes to the industries. Okay, my uh, third set of experience is on the agriculture value chain. Uh, there is a general say that, you know, if you put up the solar uh, uh, photovoltaic for uh, pumping or on the agriculture land, you, you, you don't, you, uh, the, the growth will not happen. But apparently, German, uh, Japan and Germany have been experimenting on how to, uh, you know, avoid this issue, rather use it for the benefit because you will clean up and water will go and there is shared excess temperature will not go and spoil, uh, spoil the growth of the plant. They have experimented and come up, uh, they have come up with uh, this uh, kind of a configuration. Uh, uh, if, if you put up in that configuration, it will rather help the growth of uh, the plants. Uh, so that's called agrivoltaics. And, uh, and, and uh, India also, there are quite a few experiments. In fact, Amiti, University has done a very uh, useful experiment with a lot of data. So I'm just putting these things for your information. And solar cold storage are a very important thing. In fact, uh, I'm involved with uh, UNDP in promoting solar cold storages uh, in, in, the, in a few states. So right now there are about uh, 350 such uh, uh, products. And uh, typically when I went to Kodarma village in Jharkhand, uh, and had a discussion with the uh, farmer producer organization, the very interesting things came out. Whenever the cost of uh, sabzi, uh, vegetables, is less than 20 rupees per kilo, they would put it into the this uh, cold storage, uh, tomato, beetroot, carrot, things like that. And uh, whenever the market price is more than 20 rupees, they would, they would take it out and sell. But 100 farmers use this 5 metric ton of uh, solar cold storage. We should find a way. Right now, it's about 15 to 16 lakh rupees. When UNDP, you know, from their first purchase at 16 lakhs, when they made a big order of 30, 30 big order is 30 because it's still in the nascent stage. The cost fell down to 14 lakh rupees. So you see how the, uh, you know, the mass production scale of operation will reduce the cost. And very interesting thing I observed uh, with this farmer producer organization is when, uh, you know, it's not there let's say vegetables produced by them, but when the market price is less than 20 rupees, they would buy that uh, uh, sub, uh, vegetables from the market, put it into their uh, solar cold storage. And when the, uh, it is not grown by them, but elsewhere. And then sell it when uh, the cost is more than 20 rupees per kg. People find innovative ways to increase their incomes. This will go a long way in uh, increasing the incomes. You know, Prime Minister has called for uh, doubling the income. These are the gadgets which can really help one, negotiate better prices um, and increase the income. And it is uh, the wastage, 35% is the wastage in the agriculture value chain. So uh, there are waste, uh, I mean, uh, biomass-based cold storage is also, that's win-win because in the fields, you will get a lot of biomass uh, waste residue in the form of residue, et cetera, available. Uh, and then solar dryers is another big area because it can have much, uh, much required shelf life and thereby better negotiation for the price. And not only that, there are uh, some significant uh, uh, studies which say nutrition value is also quite high. So uh, uh, we are again sitting just about 3,500 such dyers are put up and there, there exists a lot of entrepreneurial opportunity. All these are uh, kind of locally produced. Whereas if you look at SPV, we have to guard ourselves from uh, by you know invest uh, investing in other countries like China and uh, uh, you know by purchasing from there we are perhaps if I may say uh, are we not increasing their GDP uh, so whereas all this solar uh, all this uh, our DRE per se they are customized they are 
uh, local so and they they require installations so they are they are they are better bet for our pathway to net zero in my view so you know i bumped into this very interesting innovation by train technologies it's a big uh, multinational company uh, working in the area of cold chain they provide cold solution uh, cooling solutions to uh, walmart and things like that so few uh, individuals who are interested in doing something for the you know society they say they they found out this very interesting simple concept you, you are seeing a cart and above that some kind of a coil it's a uh, solar reflect uh, reflective coil so it reflects 95% of the heat thereby inside the cart the temperature is uh, uh, reduced by 8 to 12 degree centigrade typically what happens if you uh, these vegetables when they buy in the morning this uh, uh, you know uh, when the last mile vendor will buy it at the uh you know uh, uh at, at the monday at around 3 3 3:30 in the early in the morning and by 3 o'clock in the afternoon they have to sell it out otherwise uh, otherwise you know it it it, it will go uh, you are unable to sell it the next day particularly leafy vegetable which is like women uh, are involved more in this uh, uh, produce and uh, they particularly go go bad by end of the day and they are compelled to sell it at a very low price and they they have estimated a global loss uh, is around 750 billion dollars annually uh, due to this last mile uh, issue so they have experimented this in uh, kolar kolar district is uh, though it's very next to uh, bangalore but temperatures are high so they uh, they are experimented it, it in uh, there but it's not their uh, main forte but it's open for they they are ready to you know uh, share the tech, uh, whatever technique that they have developed with uh, whoever is interested solar refrigerators again i am not going into these details just to suffice to say that dre you have now products and enterprises uh, possible i only look for uh, you know skill council for green jobs to add this dre in a big way in their syllabus in their qualification packs micro pumps is another big area i again here i don't understand why you know every household we have urban households are about 270 million why we we cannot even i mean we can make mandatory you know the solar pumps it is hardly 30 40 50 feet uh, uh, height that you have to pump up the water to from the sump to uh, you know the the overhead tank so they should be if you see uh, only 500 600 micro pumps are installed but we don't need a huge pump in uh, in our house uh, which will only pump up in 15 minutes even if it takes 4 hours what's the problem so have a low low power with a few panel pumps and then um, you know uh, you can pump up in a uh, you know a, a, a green way my last set of experience is on the sericulture value chain i spent almost 10 years in the sericulture value chain from the energy perspective uh, i'll uh, i'll narrate one two or three one is you know uh, you have uh, these houses they they actually mulberry leaves are fed to the worms and they produce cocoons and they require a temperature range of 23 to 28 degrees centigrade just like us so silk worms are also like us if it if it goes beyond that the the whole yield is either bad or it will be wasted so you have almost 300000 families depending on it and in all mal, uh, the silk in india uh, i think it's uh, second in, in yeah it is second in the world and we produce significant silk and from the point of view of uh, uh you know so 300000 houses actually what they do in the winter they run they they run uh, this 400 uh, uh, watts uh, bulbs uh, to warm it up and or heaters some people use heaters in the in the uh, summer they uh, they use uh, the local methods some uh, if you the minute you go for air conditioners etc it is not remunerative so that's why uh they resort to the localized methods localized methods are something of this uh, nature so uh when i was in uh, terry at that time uh mnre was kind enough to sanction this pro- project to make solar passive silk worm bearing houses but uh, you know terry did a good job and uh, and come came out with this uh, house which maintained the temperature um but there is a opportunity to multiply that as i said 300000 houses actually uh, practice sericulture in south india and uh, mostly south india only because in the north uh, northeast and the east 
they uh, harvested directly from the uh, trees tassar muga etc so let me go to few other uh, experiences you know uh, if you see uh, just this converting cocoons to silk you know they use on uh, if you see the left hand side they use biomass every unit uses almost 100 or uh, 200 kg of biomass to and like this there are uh, 30 25 plus 1000 uh, uh, units and uh, they burn about 100 225000 tons of uh, fuel in the form of loose biomass as well as woody biomass even today they are running uh, the minute they go for gas or something the cost will be prohibitive and they won't get a re- get returns so there is this kind of a system uh, reduces uh, um, uh, almost by not only reduces the biomass consumption since the temperature is uh, consistent silk yield increased by 3.5% and the quality of silk also improved i am just sharing this because if we have in india several such uh, applications so e- each application you get into you will find out the whole value chain and uh, you will find more opportunities so this is again a value chain of the silk the next is the di- bleaching and after the bleaching there is a coloring so uh, and then if you go further you know if you see wherever on the left side you see uh, the chimneys are like bare where and if you are able to touch it then you can assume okay the thermal engineer has no business but if you are able, uh, if you are unable to touch it then you know if you see on the right side simple jackets like this water jackets like this can reduce uh, significant biomass consumption and uh, and provide the required uh, you know hot water or whatever it is so uh, these are some of the pictures solar charaka again uh, we i mean 10 lakh uh, more than 10 lakhs of uh, charakas are in operation so they can be solarized that reduces the drudgery of a woman uh, who can produce say half a kg of uh, yarn per day they can produce about 2 kilos if they have solarized charaka <clears throat> so there are some in fact i was involved in uh, uh, in uh, rec where we gave a uh, uh, kvsc center in varanasi they are running uh, they are uh, training about 1000 uh, uh, women on this solar charaka operation to run their business solar looms are attached to solar charaka i am not going to the details so i will just before uh, you know uh, some interesting uh, diary you know this is something which uh, bumped into when i was again the csr uh jhuggi jhopdi they have they, they, you know they cannot put up a school a uh, permanent school so the children remain almost a million children are without school because they have nowhere to go all these come up in the uh, areas uh, which are like away from the city they are new cities in a way so where there are no schools and they, both uh, parents are going for work they 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 cannot afford so they remain uh, without any education so a proposal came to me that they would like to run a bus and then uh, my uh, earlier experience of uh, what will they do in summer what will they do for light if uh, the last uh, in a winter in in delhi uh, say in the evening 4 o'clock it will become dark so i said why don't you if they have to run the engine to run the run these gadgets it is uh, prohibitively expensive so i suggested let's go for solar roof and then they tried there were lot of uh, resist- i mean uh, hindrances rto would not give approvals and uh, bus uh, uh, company would not give guarantees but this was put up and uh, you know solar rooftop was put up and they are running uh, you know with the lights the fans and a projector and a computer using this uh, this thing so i made a back of envelope calculation how many such buses are for are required to educate our 1 to 2 million children is about 2 to 4000 such buses would be required anyway so he is trying but but you know i'm just saying dr can just be everywhere um okay i'll just skip this and then this another thing is uh, you, i don't know how many of you have visited the uh, only toilet museum of the world uh, that is in mangalpuri in uh, near dwarka in uh, uh, in delhi i'm sure uh, dr Pra uh, saxena and dr dharmija would have visited but i urge others to really go here and see they have done a wonderful job uh, there are uh, you know uh, community uh, there are uh, public toilets they have connected it to biogas so why can't we do for all institutional premises you know particularly uh, you know the district hospitals 
or any uh, universities where you run this kind of things, run an engine, run your uh, canteen. If not, if that is a taboo, you run a um, hot water system, whatever it is. So, so these are these are tremendous opportunities on which we are sitting. Uh, so I'm leaving this, uh, you know, a few vi uh, videos when I. Uh, on 25 different applications, four to five min, uh, minutes videos, they are all available uh, on the uh, on the YouTube. Uh, so those who are interested can watch. I'm not going to run any of them because uh, short of sort of uh, time here. So I see, you know, uh, skill council. I was uh, I was going through the skill council's website and brochures. You have a big target of three three and a half crore jobs by 2047. My request is, you know, how you, if you can please give, of course, I'm available for my, my thoughts on this. Uh, how can you make all this decentralized renewable energy also in your envelope? That is uh, one of the. Uh, now, in summing up, what can we do in DRE? At the household level, we have 300 million households. That's our potential. Net zero energy houses, energy efficiency, solar roof. Cooking solutions, solar induction stoves, improved cook stoves, biogas, solar water heaters, solar pump, zero wet waste. I did not cover this either by composting or by biogas plants. Smart metering because you know what you are consuming. Agriculture, 30 million electrical and diesel pump sets should be replaced through solar pumps. Solar cold storages, I mean, they run into lakhs in, in, in terms of potential. Uh, solar dryers, they are, also can run into lakhs. At self-help groups, there are about 7.8 7, uh, 7 lakh self-help groups and villages, we have 600,000. So mini grids, micro grids at the village level, I explained to you for the public utilities, common compost, anaerobic uh, sludge blanket reactors, different kind of uh, biogas production. Uh, and then at, at the enter enterprises level, you have 60 million enterprises, all of them will require energy, either for electricity or for process heat or for both. And then there is a lot of uh, research that can go on uh, in, in this uh, DRE, just to name a few. Solar distillation, mixer grinder, uh, because uh, uh, high temperature solar furnace, solar systems of uh, higher efficiency, if you are able to get it here, it will be it will become even smarter. So uh, I think now, where is the money? There is a, you know, climate finance, there is a lot of push by developing nations on uh, making hundred billion dollars available every year. That's and then several other international funding sources, CSR funds. Public sector has three thousand crores. Private sector has about seven thousand crores. And include DRE into national rural livelihood mission and state rural livelihood mission. Subsidies and loans. And most important is ensure that it appears in the policies and schemes. Uh, both national and international uh, at the international forum. So in all, what should be watched out in the DRE ecosystem? It should get included in state action plan on climate change. I'm I'm involved in writing in in adding the uh, revising the few chapters and adding a few chapters on Madhya Pradesh and uh, Bihar. I have included them. Uh, Skill Council for Green Jobs, uh, India Cooling Action Plan comes up with a lot of. Uh, uh, market potential in the cooling space, $900 billion in the agriculture cold chain, $1.3 trillion in the space cooling. Clean Energy Access Network is a fantastic resource in terms of uh, documents, in terms of its network of 150, 200 uh, uh, agencies. And uh, you may know that Parliament has come out with this new bill on Net Zero Emission Commission. Uh, correct me, uh, Dr. Saxena, if uh, I, I'm, I'm right or wrong on this. NZD councils, they are putting up at the state level and district level, and they are making annual reporting as a requirement back to parliament. So these are some things where we should watch out. All of us, whoever are in this area, should include uh, a DRE ecosystem in all the areas that we come across. With this, thank you very much for the opportunity. I don't know if I have exceeded my time, but uh, thank you very much. Over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Dr. Shinivas. Very, very illustrative. Very, very, you know, it has covered so much. A, a, a true picture of the DRE sector. But, you know, what I want, there are no questions. Everybody has said it is very informative, very good talk, and they have learned a lot. But at the same time, I would like to mention when you showed this slide of MNRE, 
biomass gasifiers which we, you and i would say they have a lot of potential and they did exist we have done a lot of work but they never found a mention in the dre you know systems in the mnre list so that is very sad i you must you told about the hoshali village the tumkur project of undp 500 kilowatt that was also very very illustrative then the west projects with dr saxena also we were there together and we had set up so many but i am it's very unfortunate that none of them are listed anywhere or are projected and we need to popularize this this biomass gasifier when you were giving the talk i tried to check up with bangalore india mart is offering small small gasifiers so this is the type of market potential or the market channel which has developed but in our government i think so we still don't have, we 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 have lost track of it that is very sorry i should say and uh, i i'd like uh, dr saxena to yeah uh, thank you very much dr uh, shrin devasan in fact uh, probably even if you have one you have not exceeded the time second even if you have uh, exceeded the time that is well spent frankly speaking yeah beautiful information compiled beautiful experience in fact uh, the the very reason uh, when we discussed about your topic was that your experience is so rich uh, that all of us need to be enriched uh, with this thank you very much once again uh, i can see that you have given a lot of homework to skill council for green jobs <laughs> surely we will not disappoint you and we will will do our best uh, one small favor i would like from you is that we are thinking of uh, uh, sort of preparing a series of uh, webinars on hydrogen because you know hydrogen mission has been announced on 4th of january and there is a lot of international um, experience uh, maybe uh, almost every country has done something or the other so uh, and considering that you have been always associated with international organizations i would request if you can put together maybe whenever it is convenient to you something on what is happening internationally uh, in in green hydrogen or hydrogen so uh, we will uh, we will approach you uh, whenever your time permits i know uh, you are always tied up with various things but that would be a good area on which we would like your short uh, intervention presentation because we are also now working uh, for for what kind of a jobs we should uh, we should look at what kind of a job opportunities we have in green hydrogen the mission document says that we would have about 6 lakh jobs in green green hydrogen alone Uh, so uh, we are all gearing up for that and it would be extremely important for for us to take your views uh, in in this uh, matter you have offered your services for 3 crore i am just talking about 60 lakhs <laughs> you... <laughs> I, i would like to add here what about uh, bio hydrogen from biomass like they're saying green hydrogen now biomass also has been identified as one of the potential sources so when you do this hydrogen series don't forget biomass i know this is your core uh, this thing and we cannot dealing no, ourselves with biomass uh, were, were you not surprised to see the list he has shown on the dre uh, yeah, application no, no, this is there this i mean we have worked in this sector this is, it is it has always been there but you know we we used to do solar dryers we used to do small 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 applications but these applications have never come you know they've never been propagated yeah. the way they should be and i was i was thinking my... the the only way to push this is to create more and more entrepreneurs because none of us can reach to to to, to the villages frankly speaking uh -huh. so why not to create more and more solar entrepreneurs from rural areas hand hold them tell them what are the possible applications and probably they themselves would take take it to their villages Mm -hmm. uh, we did not to really uh, no, 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 right. uh, go as government it. or uh, or or mnre or any other organization why not to do a lot of skilling uh, uh, of entrepreneurs on various aspects of decentralized energy applications uh, i would be very happy to plan it out uh, dr shrinivasan um, with your, with the motivation you have given to us as a new new area on which probably Uh, which ca which can make a uh, surely a difference in net zero also and carbon emissions yeah. reduction also. Questions are there in the chat box. One Mr. Sanjay Mande he has said that this is coverage is very good, very informative, but he feels that MNRE instead of power should have focused on thermal applications due to high opportunity cost it can offer to local biomass. What are your comments on this? Mande ji, I I fully I mean you know on this uh, subject. 
Mande ji would have been a better speaker actually. <laughs> he knows it all. So, <laughs> so Mande ji, you are absolutely right. In fact, that's what they should be because uh, no, yeah, I, I still feel what MNRE has done in the solar photovoltaic is fantastic. So now is the time to really, you know, put a full gear on the thermal. I, I mean, I fully agree with that. Yeah, and there's one more uh, question, you know, are we, this is Mr. Dhamma Raju. He says, are we going towards industrial thermal applications? Uh, I don't know. I don't understand the question fully, but, uh, you know, uh, industrial there, thermal Mr. application uh, is already Maharaj? there. Yeah. Industrial thermal application is already there. Yeah. So it's only how, how much of, uh, you know, efficient you can make it. For example, boilers, I'm uh, providing the support to UNIDO. Uh, to our surprise, when we actually went to the field and found out the boiler efficiency, the, the claimed efficiency is 80%, 75%. But uh, on field, it ranges from 42 to 62%. So mm -hmm. are there ways to reduce that uh, inefficiency? Uh, and one, one is inefficiency and another is, uh, if it is steam and all, one can look at the uh, concentrator as a roof. If it is only hot water, one can look at the solar water heater. Uh, so first is reduce whatever you are using and other is replace. Uh, Dharm, uh, Dhammaraju, you, you, yeah, please go ahead. Not able to hear you. Can you be louder or nearer the mic? Hello, uh, sir, actually I am asking about uh, the chemical reactions part. Actually, right now the industry is not using much of the solar part of thing except for steam and all i absolutely agree with you for boiler and all in the in future when we are talking about net zero and all then i feel that uh, part of the load should be taken from the for chemical reactions point of view reactors point of view and at high temperatures beyond uh, 400 500 degrees centigrade at uh, that kind of thing so that the efficiencies and then net zero objectives can be met in my opinion no, you are right. You know, I had the opportunity to go with MNRE senior officials to Germany. I, I had a chance to witness this solar furnace, which can take the temperature up to 2000 degrees centigrade. But right now it is very costly. Uh, but uh, there are some solutions, even at that range. We asked this question to Germany uh, counterparts. Why are you, you know, is it is it useful immediately to you? Uh, they said not uh, immediately in our country, but we are preparing for the future. So, uh, you know, there are some solutions that people are working already at a very high temperature of up to um, over 300, 400 degrees centigrade, which goes beyond the uh, current uh, solar concentrators which are able to provide. You know, let me share with you, actually we are working in uh, thermochemical hydrogen generation reactions, actually at ONGC Energy Center. We are also looking out for some kind of sources, solar thermal, where we can uh, get a temperature of the scale of uh, order of 100,000 degrees centigrade, actually 500,000 degrees range, like so that at least things will be going into the uh, yeah, green, you green you energy. Uh, Damaraju, I do not know uh, in terms of the cost economics, but that you will look at. I can give that link off offline. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, sir. It's a wonderful presentation. Actually, we enjoy it thoroughly. Just, yeah. just, or some uh, somebody has Dr. Sunil Dambe. He said that Dr. Shinivas, you have discussed everything under the sun and blended it with several interesting case studies. If you have to pick up two prominent limitations, what would these be? Oh, very difficult question. Sunil, you come up with difficult questions. <laughs> One is, uh, you know, uh, what is what is uh, 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 one limitation is the you know, whatever said and done, it has to be uh, driven at from central leadership. You know, I I I, I was in the uh, panel with the World Bank uh, officer uh, what a month ago. Uh, so he asked me this question. Uh, you know, I was prop propagating this Prime Minister Savas Yojana net, going net zero. So why is it not happening? Okay. So we gave different answers, but I will only copy his answers to you now. Uh, which he said, uh, why don't you make, uh, you know, uh, a prime minister mission, prime minister's net uh, NZD PMA, why? It will all happen. So I would only look for uh, such a, uh, you know, shaking up by the top leadership on looking at, looking into the DRE. And Mr. Sanjay has uh, given this, he says that for effective DRE promotion, user-friendly product development should have been given more attention in policies. 
for its wider use, adoption, and enhancing its capacity utilization to enhance its economic viability. Of course, that is what I was also saying. Okay, our policies did not take cognizance of the developments we had in the development sector. But so once we have this kind of a scale, uh, Dr. Damijaji, uh, you know, the, the way we have uh, set targets in the SPV that we would like to do 100 gigawatts, rest all will fall in place. But, 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 but Dr. Oksab, don't you feel that time has come where we don't need any subsidies? These products are, they yes. are so user friendly. They are, and I think cost is also not, if the payback period, see biogas, look at the biogas, the, the payback period is so short in gasifiers also. I think all the units, Terry has set up so many units in all the namkeen producing units, all there's what I used to listen, I used to see in your reports. So I think it should get set like people like you can, you know, push it further. You can, because you have the information, you have the technology, only you have to connect to these industries and give them the solutions. I visited Nagpur and I visited all the eateries also where I could promote the eco-friendly stoves. They were, they were using it. And there was a regular sub supply of biomass pellets also. They were buying the pellets from the person who had supplied the stove, like you showed in ESCO. And they were replacing uh, LPG. They were very happy. The replacement costs were, uh, you know, the, there was it was financially viable. They were, you know, not having any problem, no supply, nothing. Everything was good. No, no, you know, no emissions. So such companies have to come up, you know. They have to go, they have to push, talk, and convince people, and people are convinced. I, there this has is to be some point. bit of a pull factor, Dr. Damija. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just the way this uh, 1 billion tons of carbon dioxide reduction is the target, one of the target under the NDC. If, uh, you know, if I may say, uh, it, it includes not only electrical, but thermal, mm -hmm. and then uh, carbon market is uh, will also help for the initial pull. That would uh, perhaps help this sector much more. Because you know, the, as you know, photovoltaic just 10 years ago it was 17 rupees per unit of power. In uh, 10 years, we are down to 2.55 rupees per uh, unit. That's not very sustainable, though. It can be, it can benefit better if it is four rupees. But something like that nature, uh, some that kind of a pull is very essential. So that you have to focus, you have to emphasize because you know, in the in I don't want to quote, but in one of the meetings I went for when my MNRE launched the bioenergy mission, you know, the bioenergy programs, Mr. R. K. Singh he had said that we are confident we will meet our targets through solar, but we need biomass so that we can improve the life condition of the farmer to double his income. So I feel some of the policy, some of the consultants or some of the people who are in this field, they need to emphasize on this point, what you are saying, that this also will be a big contribution to the net zero goal. You know, targets gigawatt level we will achieve, but what about the emissions in parallel with it? And what are the, you are ameliorating the conditions, you know, you are making it better for the uh, masses, which are already 60% in the rural areas. It's a, it makes a lot of difference. You know, a smaller solar light, a small lamp. In the West projects, life had transformed when they had shifted from the kerosene, uh, uh, you know, lamp or the kerosene pot they were using to bulbs. It, had, it made a lot of difference. They said that we are now seeing Diwali after 60 years of independence. That was the type of interaction we had. So that focus also has to be there. Yeah, I agree. You know, just take solar water heater, which is proven. You don't need yeah. any subsidy. Just a pull. And include, uh, include that in the, you know, uh, you can uh, include uh, that 1 billion tons of carbon dioxide in uh, the NDC target. The, uh, the solar water heater is all, also gets included and make a mission for 100 uh, million meter square. Uh, right now we are at 2022, but 100 million meter square would be sufficient to pull through your 1 billion tons per uh, cumulatively by 20, 2030. So that little pull is required there. Yeah. 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 Thank you so much, Dr. Srinivasan. In fact, it's an endless discussion. Um, uh, all of us have been in the field for 35 years, 40 years. Uh, so, PB, um, now your duty to thank the speaker yeah. and close the session. Sure, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for the excellent presentation. Uh, in the presentation, you cover all the sectors very well, and that's provide uh, very good knowledge to participants. Thank you very much, sir. I would like to thank all the participants for his valuable time 
and patience for listening. Thank you all for joining. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Thank you, uh, thank thank you very much, Dr. Shrinivasan. Thank Thanks a lot. Thank you, all thank, the you thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. So, I'm getting the process. So, filter often basically is in the order.